On the xy plane exists vector a whose coordinates are 4,3. Then find the vector b which is vector a rotated pi over 3 radians counterclockwise around the origin. Alright, so the problem is essentially asking, do you know how to rotate vectors? But vectors starting at the same point, which can be called the reference point, in this case the origin, can be also treated simply as points. So this is the same question as, do you know how to rotate points? Here I will show you three famous methods to rotate vectors or points in a plane. One method can be simpler than others depending on the problem, so it is definitely beneficial to remember them. The first method is what I call angle and magnitude method. You see, every vector or point on a plane can be defined using two parameters. First, the magnitude of vector r, which is equal to the distance to the point from the origin. Second, the angle between the vector and the positive direction of x-axis, theta. I mean, there exists an entire coordinate system where we express the point in terms of distance or radius r and angle theta, which is the polar coordinate system. In Cartesian coordinate, this point is given as r cosine theta, comma r sine theta, because this length is r cosine theta, and this length is r sine theta. So in our given problem, for this vector a, whose coordinates are 4,3, we can easily find out that the magnitude of the vector is 5 by the simple Pythagorean theorem. So we can write this vector a as 5 cosine theta, comma 5 sine theta, where cosine theta equals 4 over 5, and sine theta equals 3 over 5, or you can also write theta equals arctangent 3 over 4. Now, if we rotate this vector pi over 3 radians counterclockwise, you can see that the magnitude of the vector remains unchanged, so it is still 5, and the angle now becomes theta plus pi over 3. Therefore, vector b can be expressed as 5 cosine theta plus pi over 3, comma, 5 sine theta plus pi over 3. And using the angle addition formulas, this equals 5 times cosine theta cosine pi over 3 minus sine theta sine pi over 3 and 5 sine theta cosine pi over 3 plus cosine theta sine pi over 3. And since cosine theta equals 4 over 5 and sine theta equals 3 over 5, we have 5 4 over 5 times cosine pi over 3 is 1 half minus 3 over 5 times sine pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2 and 5 3 over 5 times 1 half plus 4 over 5 times square root of 3 over 2 which is 4 minus 3 square root of 3 over 2 comma 3 plus 4 square root of 3 over 2. And here we have our answer. The second method is to use the fact that the rotation of a point or a vector around the origin is a linear transformation. More specifically, we use the famous rotation matrix. Consider an arbitrary point or vector x, y. Suppose that if we rotate this point by angle theta counterclockwise, we obtain point x prime, y prime. Then, since rotation is a linear transformation, this point x prime comma y prime, which can be expressed as a column vector x prime y prime, is given as the column vector x y multiplied by r theta, where this r theta is a 2 by 2 matrix that depends on the rotation angle theta, which is called the rotation matrix. So, how can we find this matrix r theta? This is actually a really simple derivation, so I will quickly cover that here. The simplest way to find r theta is investigating where the vectors 1, 0 and 0, 1 move by this rotation. If we rotate vector 1, 0, then this length is 1, and this length is cosine theta, and this length is sine theta, so this point is cosine theta, sine theta. Therefore, Rotation matrix R theta times column vector 1, 0 equals cosine theta, sine theta. Similarly, if we rotate vector 0, 1, then 
we know that this point is minus sine theta, comma, cosine theta, beware of the sine. Therefore, rotation matrix R theta times column vector 0, 1 equals minus sine theta, cosine theta. From these results, we can write R theta times and if we combine column vectors to write 1, 0, 0, 1, then on the right hand side, we can also combine the column vectors to write cosine theta, sine theta, minus sine theta, cosine theta. This is just one of the useful properties of matrices, which works because of how the matrix multiplication is defined in the first place. Now this one, matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, is an identity matrix, so the left hand side is simply R theta, so we have R theta equals cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta. And this is the rotation matrix of rotating around the origin counterclockwise by an angle theta. Now using this rotation matrix, we can find vector B. In this problem, column vector XY, is simply 4, 3, and theta equals pi over 3, so the rotated point x prime y prime equals r pi over 3 times 4, 3, therefore cosine pi over 3 minus sine pi over 3, sine pi over 3, cosine pi over 3 times 4, 3, and cosine pi over 3 is 1 half, and minus sine pi over 3 is minus square root of 3 over 2, and sine pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2, and cosine pi over 3 is 1 half, so we have this times 4, 3, which gives first 1 half times 4 minus square root of 3 over 2 times 3, then square root of 3 over 2 times 4 plus 1 half times 3, so we have 4 minus 3 square root of 3 over 2 and 3 plus 4 square root of 3 over 2 which is our vector b. Again, it is worth emphasizing that this rotation matrix cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta cosine theta is just worth remembering. Now let me introduce the third method and that method is to use complex numbers, especially the complex plane. You see, any complex number z can be represented as a point on a two-dimensional plane, the complex plane. And there are two ways to write this complex number. The first one is obviously by using a real part and an imaginary part. When the complex number z has a real part x and an imaginary part y, we can write z equals x plus y i. The other method is by using this distance r between point z and the origin, and this angle theta with the real axis. Then this is r cosine theta, and this is r sine theta, so we can write z equals r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, which is called the polar form of the complex number. You can definitely see the similarity between this and the polar coordinate system. Here, this r is also called the absolute value of the complex number z. And now comes the interesting part. Define z star as the complex number cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. That is, z star is a unit complex number with absolute value 1 with angle alpha. Now, define z prime as z multiplied by z star. Then, what does this product mean? Well, this is basically r cosine theta plus i sine theta times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. If we do the multiplication, we obtain r times, and let us write the real part first. The first one comes from this times this, so we have cosine theta, cosine alpha, and another real part comes from here, i sine theta times i sine alpha. Then we have i squared, so we have minus sine theta, sine alpha. So this is real part, and for the imaginary part, we have this times this, so sine theta cosine alpha plus this times this, so cosine theta sine alpha. Then by the angle addition formula of trigonometric functions, we have this part is cosine theta plus alpha, and this part is sine theta plus alpha. This means that this new complex number z prime has an absolute value of r, which is equal to that of z, 
and an angle of theta plus alpha. In other words, Z prime is a point on the complex plane obtained by rotating point Z by angle alpha counterclockwise around the origin. Therefore, we arrive at this very important conclusion. Multiplying a complex number, especially a unit complex number, is equivalent to rotation on the complex plane, and conversely, we can perform a rotation by simply multiplying some unit complex number. Therefore, we can solve the problem like this. You see, the given vector a can be now written as the complex number 4 plus 3i on a complex plane. In order to obtain vector b, you must rotate this point by pi over 3 radians. And let's call this newly acquired point z prime. Then z prime can be obtained by simply multiplying 4 plus 3i with a unit complex number, cosine pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. And cosine pi over 3 is 1 half, and sine pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2, so we have square root of 3 over 2i. And if we multiply this, for a real part, we obtain 2 minus 3 square root of 3 over 2. And for imaginary part, we have 2 square root of 3 plus 3 over 2. So we obtain this complex number, which can be also written as 4 minus 3 square root of 3 over 2 plus 3 plus 4 square root of 3 over 2i. Therefore, our vector b is the real part of z prime and the imaginary part of z prime. As you see, rotation on a complex plane by complex multiplication. And with that, we are done for today's video. Please hit that like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video. And as always, I will see you in another video.